Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to Speak Now Pro Wrestling. It is Tuesday, April 9th. It's Denise here, and we are here to talk about NXT. But not just any episode of NXT, but the fallout from Stand and Deliver. So I finally got to watch Stand and Deliver here today, right, like before the show. Uh, I only got to watch certain matches. I watched the NXT North American Championship match. I watched the NXT Championship match. I watched the Women's Championship match. And then, of course, the main event. So I watched four of the matches from Stand and deliver because I was like super busy during WrestleMania week, but um, I did not want to miss out on those matches because as you guys know, covering NXT on a weekly basis, I too want to know what happens at these shows and in this in these matches. So we're going to go ahead and break down what occurred today on NXT. And let me tell you, we had a pretty good show with a couple of surprises. We have brand new tag team champions we also may have a brand new addition to nxt from the main roster still not entirely clear we also might be seeing trick williams leave nxt we'll talk about that there is actually so much that we need to get into. But before I do, just a heads up to everybody. If you want to help support this podcast, get your question, comment, or statement read here on the stream. You are more than welcome at any point to send it in a super chat. And we're actually kicking things off with our first one from today. And this is Steven here who says, doing my Undertaker run to get to the stream. <laughs> so every time I see that freaking video of the Undertaker running at WrestleMania, I've seen it like a thousand times now. and Every single time, it still gets me. That shit is hilarious. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen it here. If you haven't, please do yourself a favor and seek it out because it's so funny. I don't even, like, it's literally embedded in my head. Like, I can visualize it. Um, <laughs> check it out if you guys have it. It's very hilarious. Uh, we got Sheldon Jackson here who also gifted five DWO memberships. Hell yeah, man. Uh, Sheldon, as always, thank Thank you so much for the love. We got a super chat here from Jay Stone who says they might as well have told us Ilya is doing the job so he can get called up. Kind of crazy. They came up with the lazy way to get the belt off of Ilya. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start with, you know what? Let's start with this topic here because I think this is the one that is going to get people, you know, really talking about about all of this. So let's get to it. We're going to kick things off with the... Uh, Trick Williams, Ilya Dragunov, Carmelo Hayes situation. We also have a super chat here, by the way, from Roberto Arsenal, who says, haven't seen NXT since gold, since black and gold days. But when Julia goes to NXT, I'm back in. I'd pay Julia Mercedes money. That's how good she is. Um, Well, thank you so much for hopping on to the NXT post show. Even if you haven't seen NXT since the black and gold days, I still appreciate you popping in. Uh, and honestly, I feel and I think a lot of fans that watch NXT would agree with me on a weekly basis. NXT really does have some hidden gems in there. And I think primarily we always talk about that women's division. And more so, I think NXT is really realizing that the fans are actually connecting with the way that they're pushing the women, because we also have, uh, we're going to be seeing the Women's NXT North American Championship be introduced. We still don't have very many details on that, only that it's coming. But they recognize that their NXT Women's Division is pretty damn good, and it's getting even better. And so I like that they recognize it and that they're doing something about it. Of course, it's still not, I, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we're seeing the type of matches that we used to see in the black and gold era of NXT because it's still very different when it comes to the in-ring portion of it. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that we don't have some good stuff on NXT. So, of course, it's like you probably will like select items on the show. You might not like the entire show. But those that have gotten used to this new version of NXT, I think, have for the most part gotten used to it already and know what to really expect from it. Um, so. Here we go. I want to go ahead and get right into Trick Williams and Elia Jagadoff and Carmelo Hayes. So let's do this, everybody. All right. So Trick Williams comes out. And it's so funny because every time 
I keep forgetting that this was not for the championship. Like I follow the product on a weekly basis, talk about it on a weekly basis. And still every time I forget that there is no championship around Trick Williams. And I think everybody is kind of like, dude, he should kind of be champion right now. He's hot. People are digging him. He's uh, really got a vibe going on and a really good aura about him on NXT. So it really feels like there's one big piece missing. And it's funny because there was even a sign right in the front row that someone had. And it said, Trick, finish your story. And I think the NXT version of this is seeing Trick Williams eventually become uh, NXT champion. And hold on to the bout and be champ and have his moment, uh, his true reign. And so it kind of feels like we're left there. We're left waiting to see when that's going to happen, right? And so the match, by the way, with him and Carmelo Hayes, I was hearing mixed results, like mixed reactions, excuse me, mixed reactions about the match. I was hearing some people say that it wasn't good. And I didn't know because I hadn't seen it until today. And I did think the match was good. I did not dislike the match. I actually enjoyed Trick and Carmelo. Uh, was it at the level that Carmelo and Ilya was? Definitely not. But I did think they did a really great job with the actual main event match. I don't know if it was the strongest uh, main event match that I've seen. I don't think so for NXT. But I still thought they did a really good job. But I did see some mixed reactions to this match. But the way that I, the way that I saw some people talking about it, they made it seem like this match was like bad. Uh, I did not think that when I watched it, by the way. So anyways, Trick Williams goes out there. And again... Big piece missing, not seeing any gold strapped around his waist. But clearly, he recognizes it. The fans recognize it. Everybody recognizes it. So he gets straight to the point and basically calls out Ilya Dragunov. And he's like, hey, man, like I need to slay the dragon. And I need to get that NXT championship. We have known that this is something he's wanted. He has seen his former bestie, Carmelo Hayes, with the championship. So this is clearly something that he's been wanting, as we know, because he's gone for the title before. And unfortunately, it didn't go the way that we thought it would for Trick Williams. So Ilya Dragunov surprisingly says no at first to this rematch. And that's very unlike Ilya. That's not an Ilya's characteristic to be saying no to Trick Williams. Ilya's the kind of guy that would fight anybody because he's so overly confident. And so I'm looking at this and I'm going, huh, that's weird. What's going to happen? And well, we got our answer. So the reason why Ilya had said no was because Trick Williams has already fought for the title and lost. So Ilya basically felt that he shouldn't have a match and that it should be somebody else's turn. But his persistence paid off and Ilya agrees to do this match. However, there's a big sort of stipulation hanging over us here. This match is happening at spring break-in. So spring break-in is going to be taking place next, um, God, what did they say? It's on the 23rd and the 30th. They're going to have two weeks of spring break-in. So night one on the 23rd and the night two on the 30th. All right. So, wait, was it the 30th? No. Yes, the 30th. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm getting confused because I'm like, we just got the dates for the draft. And now we have the dates for spring break in. And they're pretty much around the same time. So that's why I was a little bit like all over the place with that. But anyways, so we find out that this match is happening at spring break in. They did not say which night. They did not say if this is night one or night two. And basically, if... Trick Williams loses. If Trick Williams loses, he must leave NXT. So this isn't just, oh, he could never challenge for the NXT championship again. No, this is he must leave NXT. So with that being said, does this give away this, this ending? Does it give it away? Does it give away this ending? Because my initial thought, my initial reaction when they said he must leave NXT, I started to think, okay, given that the draft is happening at that pretty much the exact same time, like that same period, does that mean Trick Williams is going to be drafted in this WWE draft? 
That was my first thought. My first thought was, okay, maybe Elio will defeat Trick Williams and Trick Williams will have to leave NXT and then all of a sudden we see him in the draft, right? That's kind of what I was expecting there. That was my first thought. And I don't know if that was your first thought, but the other one could be, okay, so then that means Trick Williams is winning because he's not going to be leaving NXT and he is going to win the NXT championship and essentially be the guy, the face of NXT moving forward. I don't know what that would mean for Ilya Dragunov. I know Ilya Dragunov is another one that we're expecting to see on the main roster at some point. Uh, it, it's weird because when you ask me who should be on the main roster first, should it be Ilya Dragunov or should it be Trick Williams? It's hard to answer because Trick Williams has the hype, right? He has the buzz. He has the momentum. That's what he's got. Ilya Dragunov has been there a long time and has been really great for a long time. And it feels like he outgrew NXT yesterday, okay? He outgrew NXT a long time ago. However, I don't know if you were to pick either one to go over to the to the main roster first, who would that be? Part of me is saying Ilya Dragunov should be the first one to go only because if you keep Trick Williams on NXT, you get to see him as NXT champion. You get to see him be the face of the brand and, you know, get to do something really special. Whereas if he goes to the main roster right now, we don't get that NXT championship run. And then we also don't really know where he's going to fall at on the show, right? Whereas if he stays on NXT and becomes champion, we know he's going to have a lot of the attention on the show. So with this stipulation, is the outcome as predictable as you think? I just laid out two scenarios. There's probably other scenarios I haven't even thought of. Uh, but those are the two scenarios that instantly popped into my head. And so... I'm kind of leaning towards, I don't know, my first reaction again was that Trick Williams was going to lose. But now that I've painted the second scenario, I'm thinking that Trick Williams is definitely winning. But then at the same time, I'm like, damn, it, you know, how do I say this? Like winning at spring break in the title to me isn't as big as winning on a PLE. But then at the same time, do we have to always wait for the PLEs to see a title change? Probably not, right? You might also want to see that on these these uh the these special editions of nxt so i don't really know all right let's see what you the people are saying on this one here and um this is from john deller who says who do you feel can be the first nxt women's north american champion that's a great question i'm going to circle back to that in a second david caplin says hello denise was this weekend your favorite wrestling weekend and what was your favorite moment also did you have any cool interactions with anyone so great question um, I still think my favorite WrestleMania weekend was WrestleMania 39 because I did the stand and deliver pre-show and that was really, really cool. And it was in Staples Center. So that was probably still my favorite WrestleMania weekend. But my favorite moment this particular weekend was definitely doing the busted open party because not only did I get to do the kickoff show with Thunder Rosa and she chopped me, but also I got to go into the ECW arena and actually be in the ring and the whole venue was completely full. So it felt like I got this really authentic experience minus I didn't have to take any bumps or do anything crazy, but I still got to be like in the ring and get to experience that. So for that reason, that was definitely my favorite. Any cool interactions with anyone? Good question. So. One of the random ones that I had, not really an interaction, but it was random. <laughs> and it'll trip you out when I say it because I want you guys to visualize this. Please, guys, visualize this. Imagine you're walking in the hotel lobby. And all of a sudden, Gunther walks past you, pushing a baby stroller. We know he's the dad, but it's Gunther. And the Gunther that we see on a weekly basis on television is scary AF. This man is terrified. He chops people like there's no tomorrow, like he's chopping down a tree. So seeing him pushing a stroller, just totally like, like it just it didn't match with the Gunther that I know. So it completely like it, it was it was a sight to be seen for sure. It was very, very cute. Um, but cool interactions that I had. There was some fun ones. Obviously, I got to see Mark Henry. 
again in person. Tommy Dreamer again in person. That was fun. Um, I'm trying to think. The Gabriel Iglesias interaction was very, very fun too. So I think that was another one. I'm trying to think if there was one that happened off camera. Hmm, I don't think so. Uh, I'll think about it later. Maybe something will pop up in my head. But William Buner says, we all love you. Pro wrestling is awesome again. Thank you so much, William, for being a member of the DWO now for 14 months. Bear Hudson says, this weekend was truly emotional for me watching Naomi, Bianca, and Jade Cargill at WrestleMania. But the amount of talented ladies covering pro wrestling. Uh, I agree. There's been a lot of really phenomenal stuff that's happening. Uh, just across the board, man, across the board. Very fun. Uh, of course, getting to see um, Jade, Naomi, and Bianca have their WrestleMania moment, but also getting to see them in the press conference and how fun they were having with each other. Like they were having so much freaking fun with each other. And it made it very easy to just like watch them basically enjoy themselves. Bear Hudson, DWO member for 14 months, says, Denise, you deserve it so much, so much and more. So proud of you. Thank you so much, Bear. I appreciate that, man. I really, really do. So let's, um, man. So that's where we're at in regards to the uh, Trick Williams situation. I'm trying to see if anybody had any predictions, by the way. So here we go. Predictions. Send in your predictions, guys. We have Bonkers LFC here who says, Trick will win and Elia will get drafted. Zeno Hour believes that Carmella will work his way into this match. Well, given that he took out both Trick Williams and um, Elia Dragunov, you might be on to something as well. And Trevor L reminds me, thank you so much, that Elia has already declared himself for the draft. Yes, you are correct. So then he says, it only makes sense to move him up. Otherwise, what's the point of making a show of it unless they leave the belt on him and call up Trick instead, which they have done. We've talked about this before, how there was multiple people that were champions that got called up to the main roster while they were champions, Indy Hartwell, um, uh, the, the, the um, it was, oh God, Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. For some reason, I could not spit out their names. Um, so like this actually has happened on NXT. And also, thank you so much for reminding me that Ilya says he's already going to be in the draft because that does kind of change things, you know? Him already saying he's going to be in the draft, putting up the title on the line. Damn, now I really am feeling that this is going to be Elia uh, losing, Trick Williams winning, and Elia getting drafted. So yeah, that probably, the puzzle pieces fit a little bit better with that scenario. Um, so Trevor L, thank you so much for reminding me of that because I had forgotten that he said that last night. And by the way, last night his WrestleMania, sorry, his Raw After Mania match with Shinsuke Nakamura, I was so freaking happy so freaking happy when that happened because I was afraid that they were going to have him go out there and not defeat Shinsuke Nakamura. And I'm sorry, but this was Elia's victory to win. And the fact that they actually went with it, I was so stoked. Oh, man, so stoked. Um, So we got a lot of people. We got here. Let me read this one from Christopher who says, Trick Williams wins the NXT title. Elia Dragunov getting called up. William says, that way Elia doesn't actually lose. Melo has the Riz to overcome it. That's true. That is true. If they do do a triple threat match, you have Trick Williams. You could have Trick Williams pin Carmelo Hayes or Elia Dragunov, whoever. Uh, most likely Carmelo Hayes, I think. And like you said, Carmelo Hayes has the riz to like not look like a fool if he gets beat again by Trick Williams. Plus, he's a plus people are rooting for Trick nonstop and all of this. Um, yeah. I can see that happening, a triple threat match with all three guys, and we'll see. We will see. But as of right now, I am feeling it. Trick Williams is winning. Now that I reminded myself that about the draft thing, I think it is happening. All right, Andrew TM says, Hi, Denise, great content, WrestleMania weekend. Uh, you think Dusty Rhodes will win AEW title tomorrow night? Uh, you think Dust, uh, Dustin will finish the story? I don't think so, but I do expect the match to be really great. And the reason why I don't think so is because, well, we're already building so much into Samoa Joe and uh, Swerve Strickland, and that's happening at Dynasty. Um, I didn't even realize that that was for the title, by the way, with Dustin tomorrow night. I thought that was just a match, but I probably just didn't pay enough attention to the wording. But anyways, um, no, either way, 
uh, either way, with or without the title, I am expecting a Samoa Joe victory because again, we're getting Samoa Joe and um and Swerve Strickland over on AEW Dynasty. So thank you so much to Andrew Tam for the generous super chat. I, pre- uh, I uh, really appreciate that, man. Um, Sheldon Jackson sends in a super chat saying, I think Carmelo Hayes will cost trick the title match just like Ciampa did to Gargano years and leave NXT, then come back in the unsanctioned match. And if trick wins, he returns at the next PLE or he costs him the match and literally has to leave NXT and then again shows up on the draft. And then all of a sudden we have both Ilya Dragunov and Trick Williams on the main roster. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going to happen. But given just the way that things have been going down with the company lately, all of the surprises, the way that Raw After Mania was last night, they really showed that one, they're listening to the fans. So they're not just giving you the ick. They're not just they're they're being smarter about like who's winning matches, how they go about it and not wanting to stink up the joint and just get heat, 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 heat nonstop. You know, there's a time and a place for it all. And I think they're finding a better balance instead of screwing the fans nonstop. So it does feel like there's a good, uh, there's good, there's good air right now in this atmosphere. I don't know how to say it. It feels good right now. Sheldon, thank you so much for the super chat, man. I appreciate you a whole lot. Um, all right, so that's where we're at then. Trick Williams to win and Ilya Dragunov to get drafted. And again, with the possibility of this becoming a triple threat, given the attack from Carmelo Hayes to both guys. So that's where we're at with the closing segment. So I'm going to rewind right to the segment before that, because that was also really newsworthy. So before I get to that, we got another super chat. This one's from Matt Raikiel, who says, I'm hopeful Julia is the one that beats Roxanne. Great content, Mania Weekend, still exhausted. I feel you, Matt. I feel you. I'm exhausted, too. And um, waking up early tomorrow, that's going to be fun because I might as well tell you guys right now, tomorrow I am filling in for Dave LaGreca on the Wednesday edition of Busted Open Radio. So I will be on tomorrow on a Wednesday, not a Saturday. So... See you guys tomorrow morning. Um, all right. So this was so much freaking fun, guys. Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker. Now, going into the pay-per-view, I was like, oh, Braun Breaker, Baron Corbin, they're getting that victory. Like, I can't see them losing to Axiom and Nathan Frazier. That's literally what I said. Now, with that being said, this match here that we saw tonight was so much freaking fun. Like we've seen these guys now wrestle a couple of times and they always have good matches. This one though, I feel I feel like every time they wrestle though, it kind of gets a little better and better. And this one, man, oh boy. There were so many moments that I loved in this. Um, There was one, and this was my most favorite one, was when Braun Breaker was running the rope so freaking fast and Axiom was like, you know, doing this. He was trying to... um. I guess, catch up with him. I don't know. And then out of nowhere, Braun just hits him with this freaking clothesline. And my explanation of that did not do that justice. You need to watch the clip if you're not going to watch the match. At least watch the clip because that was really cool. They're two different teams, but they have really great chemistry. Um, And so really fun stuff back and forth. There's, I mean, Nathan Frazier's really fast. Braun Breaker's really fast. Baron Corbin is where he needs to be at all times. And uh, Axiom's also, you know, very flashy. So it all just comes together very nicely. But for the actual finish of this match, we saw Braun Breaker almost spear Baron Corbin, but he manages to stop himself. And this allowed a little bit of a distraction there. Braun Breaker gets thrown out of the ring. And this allows for Nathan Frazier to hit the freaking Phoenix Splash that, my God, this man When he hits the Phoenix Splash, part of me is like in awe at how many, how fast he goes, how fast he spins. And then the other part of me is like, God damn, that looked painful as all hell because the landing looks painful as it is. But even like the speed and the flips in which he does it looks painful because of how fast he moves. He just has like, he's like the energizer bunny. He just has this like, switch inside of him that can just go to like a way faster degree than 
uh, than a lot of people. Because, like, we've seen people do these Phoenix splashes. We've seen people do the things that Nathan Frazier does. But Nathan Frazier just does them really, really fast. And so every time it kind of gets you like, oh, shit, this guy, uh, he's a firecracker, man. So anyways, he hits the Phoenix Splash on Baron Corbin and gets the win. And we have brand new tag team champions, Axiom and Nathan Frazier. And I was honestly happy for them because at some point this was going to have to happen, guys. Braun Breaker is a SmackDown superstar. I don't know what this means for Baron Corbin. I don't know if this means he's going up to the main roster too. Now there's really not a reason since they're no longer tag team champions. So I'm expecting Baron Corbin to stick around here on NXT and Braun Breaker to continue doing what he's supposed to be doing over on the main roster. So that's where I'm at with that. But speaking of going up to the main roster, we need to talk about, I don't want to say going down, but... So let me let me say it as going over to NXT. <laughs> All right. So Axiom and Nathan Frazier, they get like a couple minutes of celebration and they are attacked by AOP and then the rest of the final testament that includes Karen Cross, of course. And I my reaction to that was, oh boy, they're back on NXT. <laughs> Literally. So this one's tough. How do I say this? This is a really good move. This is the best thing that could have happened for the Final Testament going over to NXT. Because it was just not working on SmackDown, guys. The Street Profits feud that they've been doing with Bobby Lashley and the Profits was just vanilla. It was just not, there was no sizzle in there. Nothing. There was nothing to really get excited about, which kind of sucked because people were really excited when the Final Testament first came to be together. Everybody was like, oh, my God, like Paul Ellery, uh, AOP, you know, big meaty dude. Scarlet looks phenomenal. This is going to do wonders. Karen Cross is going to be great. You know, there was all of these expectations, right? And Nothing came of it. And there was already talk, I feel like, online and stuff of people talking about, like, oh, you should go over to NXT. And I agreed with that from the second I saw people saying that, like, yeah, they should go to NXT. Now, I don't know if they're going to be official members of NXT or if they're going to be doing both. They didn't really clarify. We don't really know for sure just yet. But I do think they should stay on NXT because... NXT has worked for a lot of people. Look at what it did to Baron Corbin. Look at what it did for Apollo Crews for some time until Apollo Crews was better off on NXT. I haven't even seen them on the main roster, bro. What is Apollo Crews? What have they had him do on the main roster? Literally nothing. And at least when he was on NXT, he was getting matches. Hell, he was even on a freaking uh, main event of, a P of an NXT PLE. And now we haven't even seen the guy. So... What I'm saying is sometimes things work out better for certain talent on NXT. A perfect example of somebody who killed it and also just Ray showed me on Twitter is Dijak. Dijak has been on one. He's been on a good one. He's been getting lots of uh, good matches. He finally started getting some wins. Unfortunately, he didn't get the win over on Stand and Deliver. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But the point being that... For a lot of people, it just works out better on NXT. In fact, the last time I cared about Karrion Cross was when he was on NXT feuding with Samoa Joe. Feels like 40 million years ago, but when that was happening, that was actually very entertaining in my opinion. And so this is a good idea to have the Final Testament on NXT. And I kind of hope that they're NXT exclusive. And AOP being on the NXT tag team division, just going to add so much because you only have, you have very limited teams right now. Um, and so you could definitely use AOP. Uh, and they're obviously no strangers to the NXT tag team division because they've been there, seen it, been there, done that. But again, this is a new version of NXT. And so we'll see how they... Uh, do there and you still have the good brother so I feel like this is definitely a way better call for the final testament all right but we got a couple of super chats here um thank you so much to metalhead for life who's in the house saying you're perfection what you do Denise forever thank you so much for all the support dude uh he also sends in a super chat saying I guess the final testament got demoted because it couldn't hang on the big shows and I I do feel bad saying brought down got demoted but point blank NXT 
is not the same as Raw or SmackDown. Raw and SmackDown are the goals. So even though it kind of sucks to say I went down, got demoted, it is kind of a little bit of the truth, though. So uh, thank you so much for that super chat, man. So that was the uh, big thing there. Now, I want to rewind to a super chat that was brought up from John Deller earlier. And it was his question about who do you feel can be the first NXT Women's North American Champion? So this was announced over on Stand and Deliver that Ava Rain basically said because the women's division is so fire right now in NXT that they decided to do this belt. And let me tell you, this is a really great example of adding a belt when it's necessary. I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, they should add this belt or that belt. In every company, right? Every promotion, I feel like people are like, oh, let's have these belts. Let's have these belts. And then I'm like, why? Why do we need this belt? We don't need these belts. We don't even got the talent for it, right? That happens all the time. And this is a situation that's not like those other situations. This one here, they actually have the depth in the women's division to do this championship bout. I can sit here and name like a million girls. Well, not a million, but you get what I'm saying. A bunch of girls on NXT that can legitimately beat NXT North American champion for the women. And so there's a lot of options, but right now I'm going to throw out a name. And that name that I'm going to throw out is Fallon Henley. Fallon Henley is personally my pick right now to be the first one to win the NXT Women's Champ- NXT North American Women's Championship. It's going to take me a second to get used to that. Um, so the reason why I pick Fallon Henley is because right now, over with the NXT Championship for the women's, we have Roxanne Perez, who's this big-time heel, right? She's big-time heel. I would like to see the NXT North American Women's Champion be a baby face. And I think their best female baby face besides like Fia Hale is legitimately Fallon Henley. And Fallon Henley has been very, she's been very good month in and month out. And I feel like she hasn't gotten that like extra boost. Like she's not, you know, competing right now for the women's championship. She hasn't gotten that extra thing to take her to that next level. And I feel like she's got all of the tools. She's got a great personality. She's got a great look. She's fun and good in the ring. And she has confidence. So to me, she screams as the number one option, in my opinion, to be the first women's NXT North American champion. So my pick right now is Fallon Henley. That's where I'm going at with that one. But again, there are some other really good options. But my pick is Fallon Henley. And I'm going to see if there's anybody here that has some other names. We're seeing uh, Lola Vice. Lola Vice will be a great one too, especially because she's so popular um, as well and so freaking fiery. Lola Vice would be a close second for me for sure. Uh, I did think of Kalani Jordan as well here. Um, Kalani Jordan, she can also be one too. Uh, she's been very, very good. We got people saying Gigi Dolan. Um, they need to do a little bit more with Gigi Dolan, I think. Uh, Fia says scout your boy. Um, Kiana James is another one that I think would be really good too. She's also been very consistent on the show alongside, um, Fallon Henley as well. Um, let me see what else Ooh, I'm trying to think about somebody else, but right now that's where I'm sitting at with the, with the NXT North American women's championship. We got Chloe Adams here who says, give Kiana a singles title run on the future of NXT. There you go. I just mentioned Kiana James and we got more people out here uh, also suggesting her too. And yeah, I agree with that one. All right. So since we are on the women's topic, I might as well go ahead and talk about what we saw with Roxanne Perez's promo that kicked off the show. So This was fun, and there was a little bit of a surprise that came out of this, and then we also got a really good match. So let's bunch this all in together. Roxanne Perez, your new NXT Women's Champion. She is now a two-time champion. This is it, guys. This is it right here. We have been talking about this for months, how we have been waiting for Roxanne Perez to have that reign, that specific reign. We have been waiting for it. This is it, and it got off to a really good start. She has a pretty spicy promo where she's, like, fighting with the crowd. The crowd's like, she deserves it, and then the crowd's like, no, she doesn't. Um, It was a really great little back and forth there with the crowd and with um, Roxanne. Lyra comes out, and she's asking for a rematch. And I'm like, girl, you're crazy. What are you doing? Why are you asking for a rematch when you have one arm? 
Your other arm is in a sling. Are you crazy? I know you're passionate, girl, but you are not at 90%. You're not at 80%. You're not even at 60%. What are you doing? This is not the right thing to do. So, of course, it doesn't happen. But it doesn't happen because Tatum Paxley comes out. And she, we know, has had this, like, obsession with Lyra that never really got clarified what kind of an obsession it was. Like, we still don't know if it was, like, an idolized type of obsession or a lover's obsession. I'm not really sure what it was, to be honest, but <laughs> it was happening. Um, And so she's out there playing with her hair. And I'm like, mm, where's this going? You know, what's going to happen right now? And then she ends up attacking her. She attacks her. And I think she like yelled at her like it's not on you anymore or something like that. Um, So I don't know. I don't know. But I will tell you this, though. It kind of broke my heart a little bit when Tatum Paxley did turn on Lyra. And part of me wanted to see. I wanted the conclusion of this. I wanted to know why she was so obsessed with her. And so I'm assuming it's because she doesn't have the championship anymore. So therefore, she's no longer, you know, her idol anymore, I guess. Not really even too sure. Um, if someone has a better explanation, please let me know in the chat there. But anyways, that's what's going on there with Lyra and with Tatum Paxley. But it's not over. N Natalia comes down and she confronts Roxanne. And this is something that we expected because we saw this confrontation on Raw after Mania. And Natalia wants to fight Roxanne. Roxanne doesn't want to fight her. Ava Rain comes down and is like, you're fighting her. So this match happens. We see this match between Natalia and Roxanne. And this was good. This was a good 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 match um when natalia locked in roxanne perez with the sharpshooter oh i knew like i knew roxanne wasn't gonna lose at all like i had no expectation of that but still i thought they did a really good job with the sharpshooter spot because i'm like oh hmm. and the whole time i kept thinking how are they gonna have natalia lose because natalia's got so much respect so much experience underneath her belt she's a main roster talent you just can't have her lose all willy-nilly like she's got to lose in a convincing fashion in the way that she lost it was like sort of convincing lola vice comes out and she kicks natalia uh, she like kicks her like right at the ankle and so throws her back into the ring. And as we know, Lola Vice has been beefing with Natalia. So that's why she went out there and did that. And so Natalia gets back into the ring and Roxanne hits her with the Pop Rocks and wins. So it's sort of convincing, but it was fine, actually. It wasn't like the most convincing finish, but it was fine. Like I understood exactly why everything played out and the way that it played out. Lola doesn't like Natalia. Natalia doesn't like Lola. Natalia got kicked by someone who's really good at striking in which I'm speaking of Lola Vice and then she didn't get a moment to like even settle herself and all of a sudden she's getting hit with Roxanne's pop rocks uh, and Roxanne has gotten plenty of victories with that so you know what now that I rethink about this it was a good ending about uh, it was a good ending for this match but I enjoyed this and I've really been enjoying what Natalia has been bringing to the NXT side of things uh, before with uh, Cora Jade and all of that. And now with Roxanne in this match and with the feud with her and Lola, it's perfect. It's so perfect, especially for Lola because Lola, oh man, she's a mean girl. She's a mean girl and she gives off that vibe uh, on TV. So it works out really well. I want to see them just like, you know, get at each other. I'm looking forward to that. I've been enjoying what they've been doing with Natalia. I've liked more what they've done with Natalia here on NXT than what they've been doing with her on the main roster, which really hasn't been much. So yeah, it's sort of, I'm, I'm preferring what I'm seeing on NXT here. We got Dominic Carranza, who's been a DWO member for five months, who says, I called Tatum turning on Lyra in January, BTW. Yes, you did, man. Yes, you did. Uh, thank you so much, Dominic, for the uh, DWO membership, man. All right. So I'm trying to think if that was it that I needed to say about that. Yes. All right. So um, the next topic that I want to get into is the Obafemi promo. Ooh, this was fun. All right. So like I mentioned, I watched four matches from NXT Stand and Deliver. One of them was that North American Championship match with Dijak Obafemi and uh, Josh Briggs. And let me tell you, this match was so freaking fun. If you didn't watch it, please do. Uh, you guys know I'm a sucker 
for triple threat matches. They're some of my favorites. And they're my favorite for this reason because you really get to play around with these sequences. And we saw so much of that in this match. I mean, I don't even know, like the way that they were hitting each other, the way one guy went from one thing to another guy. It was just, it was madness in there. And I freaking love that. So I loved how hard hitting it was. I love the way each guy looked. All of them look good. Like all of a sudden I was looking at Josh Briggs so much more differently after this match. Oba Femi proved why he should be NXT North American champion. Cause he had, he had done very well going up into where he won the championship. And once he won the championship, I kind of lost a little bit of interest. And I started to worry if maybe if maybe he was like the guy and then seeing him in this match, oh, I was completely reminded, okay, you liked Oba Femi for a reason and this is the reason why. So it sort of reminded me why I liked Oba Femi and actually made me like him a little bit more. And then just with Dijak, like I said, continuing that uh, good matches that he's been on in the last like year now of having these strong matches with Wes Lee, uh, Joe Gacy, and now Oba and Josh Briggs. So that was a hit, man. Those guys should be really proud of what they did at Stand and Deliver. And so what I was thinking about when Oba Femi came out, by the way, I was thinking about how I almost want to see Oba Femi get booked like as NXT's Gunther, right? So we had, you guys know, obviously, what Gunther's been doing on the main roster. I want to see that for Oba Femi on NXT. Because he's got that like really scary presence and he's a big dude and he's terrifying and he likes to beat his opponents like Mercer's like a whole lot. So that's what I was thinking about. And then Ivar comes out. Now Ivar, Ivar is a lot of fun. This dude, you see him and you expect one thing and he gives you so much more than what you expect. We know that. But he comes out there and he basically says that he was jealous that he wasn't part of that match, that he saw what they did. And he put the match over. He put Obafemi over and wants a shot. He wants a shot. He wants to fight Obafemi. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, yes, yes, please. This is all the meat that we want right here. Um, And so we get this confrontation between them that leads to like, I think it was, yeah, Obafemi who like head butted Ivar, but then Ivar freaking by the way, Ivar is not dressed as a Viking here. He's dressed in normal freaking clothes. The dude was wearing like a vest. And I think he had like a red shirt or something. And he had skinny jeans and black boots, guys. This man was wearing skinny jeans. And you know what he did? He did a whole ass cartwheel in those goddamn skinny jeans. I could not believe it. I can't even sit down and eat a meal in skinny jeans. Are you kidding me? I would explode, <laughs> explode. Those freaking skinny jeans would not last. Now going out there and freaking doing the physicality portion with skinny jeans, please applause for that. Um, Ivar versus Obafemi is happening next week. And I could not be more excited for this match. I'm so stoked for this match. It's going to be a good one. Great use of Ivar guys. This is going to be an awesome victory for Obafemi. I'm already expecting Oba Femi to win, but uh, if Ivar were to win, I would not be mad about it at all. Like, at all. All right, uh, we got a couple of Super Chats here. So let me get to some of these. We got Steven Marchulli here who says, Natalia versus Julia could be a banger. Uh, rephrase that, Steven. Natalia versus Julia will be a banger or would be a banger. For sure. Metalhead for Life sends in a super sticker. Thank you so much. Also, welcome John Black, a brand new DWO member. A welcome John Black. We got a super chat here from David Kaplan who says, by the way, I love seeing you get chopped. How did it feel? And I saw you had redness and it looked like she barely hit you. Imagine what the full force would feel like. Great job. You are a badass. Thank you so much, David. It's so funny because like in the moment, I felt like she hit me super hard, like super hard. Like to me, it felt very, very hard. Right. And I was like, kind of nervous honestly I was very nervous and I was like I should close my eyes and then I was like wait no I should keep my eyes open like I wasn't sure if I should close my eyes or not and so I just decided not to look so if you watch the video I turned like to the side and kind of do like this half eyes open half eyes close and while I was debating whether or not to close my eyes all of a sudden I just feel Thunder Rosa's two hands on my chest and it just happened so fast it's almost like a spark of electricity 
Like if you were to get electrocuted really fast, <laughs> that's sort of what it felt like to be chopped. Um, now I've never been electrocuted, so hopefully that doesn't happen, knock on wood. Um, but that's how I imagine it would feel. Um, or you know when you kind of plug something in and you see like a little spark and you all like that panic moment, you're like, ah, let that go. It's literally what it felt like to be chopped. Anyway, so I felt like she chopped me really hard. And then I watched the video and I was like, wow, that didn't look that hard. And I was like, shit, why am I pink? If it didn't look that hard, but it, it, it definitely hurt more than what it looked is what I'm saying. So now imagine the ones that look horrible feel even worse, obviously. Um, it was a lot of fun. And that was totally not planned. Thunder Rosa had no idea that I was going to ask her to chop me. She had no idea. Nobody had any idea. I had no idea. It was all impromptu. So a uh, really awesome moment to say that I was able to get cho chopped in the ECW arena. Think about that. Like, holy shit. What? All right, David Cleepin. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. Um, all right. So we need to see where are we at now with this show. Let's get into... We had Jada Parker versus Brinley Reese. Really quick thoughts on this one. Um, they both did good. They both don't often have singles matches. So I thought they did all right um, for what they did here. Jada getting the win. It seems like NXT really likes Jada Parker because you've been seeing that every time she's in a match. For the most part, she comes out looking really good out of it. So uh, it seems like they're really pushing Jada Parker there to be something uh, down the line. So good for her. Um, we also had Channing Stacks and Luca Crucifino versus Hank and Tank. This was really a nothing match. Really nothing to say about this one. Chan Chan Channing stacks Lorenzo and Luca Crucifino get the win. Not really anything to say about this one. But we did get Javon Evans versus Scripps. And this was Javon's first time on NXT here. This was his debut. He is 19 years old, guys. 19 years old. What? It's it's kind of nuts when I see stuff like this because I'm like, damn, you're 19 years old. You're already on WWE TV. What? God, it's it's just it's so crazy, you know, when you think about it. Anyways, he's a fi high flyer. This was the first time I've ever seen him because you guys know I do not watch Level Up. I have no idea what's happening on Level Up. Like they could literally be having freaking <laughs> Billie Eilish <laughs> versus Olivia Rodrigo. And I follow them like everything that they do. They could be wrestling on level up and I wouldn't even know it. Anyways, really bad example. But the point is, I don't watch level up. So I had no idea what was going on. And I'd never seen him before. Not even when he was uh, Jay Malachi over on the indies. I know he did AEW Dark. I also did not watch AEW Dark, so sorry. Um, this was my first time seeing him. And he did really great. Honestly, he went out there. He was uh, what they promoted him to be, which was a high flyer who can do these like freakish maneuvers and all these whatever. Like he went out there and he was very, very flashy, very flashy. He seems fun. And what I loved about this was that this match when they were talking about him, they were talking about his grandma, how she had passed away. And this match was really like, not just this match, but his journey here in WWE and his pursuing his dreams is for his grandma. And that really, really touched me a whole lot. So uh, not only did he come out there and really impress people, but he also, they gave him that extra, Oh damn. Like you want to root for somebody who's out there, you know, trying to, um, do something for a ma family member that's passed, especially your grandma. So uh, he really, they really got me with that one. He wins this match. They had a really cool moment, by the way, a really cool camera shot during this. He did a dive. And instead of getting the bird's eye view of the dive, we got not a bird's eye. What's the opposite? It's like the, oh shit. I forget what you call that shot. Anyways, we got the underneath shot of this here uh, with Jay Yvonne, uh doing the dive. And it looked it looked really crazy. It looked like he was a rocket. So um, anyways, really great, really great little debut for him against Scripps. So that was fun. Um, all right. So we have a couple of super chats here. Um, damn, this is a good super chat day. Thank you guys so much, man. We got Lawrence Ross here who says, glad you were able to fire off some questions at Postmania. How fun was the busted open party? So sad I missed it this year. Dude, I was not expecting 
all those people to show up. When I got there, I was like, damn, there are so many people here. Oh, and I got a really nice gift, by the way. I'm going to show this. Um, I got a really nice gift from a fan. Um, they did this like edit and they put it in a frame for me. And as you can see, uh, it's everybody from Busted Open, even even me right there. Wait, right, right there. Look at me right there. Uh, and yeah, they framed it up and they brought it. And I just thought it was a very thoughtful, really nice thing to do. And so I was very, very happy uh, to receive this gift. So it's up here now as a decoration. But yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. Um, we had ice cream. There was food. Um, I got to wear the pink robe. It was really, really hot. Uh, shout out to my friend Steve, uh, who caught who who captured a really great picture of me. So thank you so much, Steve. Shout out to Steve for that. Um, but yeah, it was very, very fun. And it was so crazy to see like everybody like there was a lot of people that I wasn't expecting backstage. And I was like, oh, shit, there's this person. Oh, shit, there's that person. What? Um, so, yeah, it was very fun to see all of the surprises and people who showed up for the Busted Open party. We have Hunter Tillman with a very generous super chat. He says, Cody Rhodes finished the story. Thank you for all that you do for your DWL family. It's always a joy seeing you continue to thrive. NXT was decent tonight. Do you think Mello will st still stay a heel when moved to the main roster? Um, no, I think he would go as a baby face, but then again, he's doing such a good job as a heel that it could work, but he's also a really good baby face. So I feel like no matter what direction they go with Carmelo Hayes, it'll work because when he was on the main roster, like for like two matches that he had on uh SmackDown because he was feud, I think it was with Grayson Waller, right? Yeah. Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Um, he was the baby face in that. So I think he will be a baby face. That's my gut feeling on it. But thank you so much, Hunter, by the way, for this freaking very nice super chat. So thank you so much for that. We got Jared here who says, watch Level Up. It's a good B show with up and comers. Jared, it ain't happening, man. I can't get myself to do it. I can't get myself to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lawrence Ross says that gift is awesome. Uh, yeah, it really is. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, dang, it was really fun to just like meet people. And a lot of people said really nice things. And it was funny because like some of the reactions of people, what they said to me, like meeting me in person were really funny. There were some things that I really wasn't expecting. <laughs> and I think the one the big thing that I got at the busted open party that like at least five people that I met told me they were like how old are you and I was like 31 and they were like well, you look 15 and I'm like thanks so that happened a lot and there was people going like it was crazy how it happened like I would meet somebody go on to the next person and like each person would say it. And so that made me very happy. I was like, oh, thank God. Um, <laughs> thank God for that. Right. Um, so anyways, I was that was cool. That was fun. It, it boosted my confidence a whole lot. Uh, Lawrence, thank you so much for the super chat, man. All right. So um, we only got one thing left to talk about. Yeah, it's really quick. Just the Izzy Dame Kiana James match versus Felon and Kalani. Really simple to Kiana and Izzy Dame get the win. Uh, an okay match. The two tag team matches I didn't really think were uh, the two tag team matches that I mentioned, the Channing Stacks and Luca versus Hank and Tank, and then the match with Izzy Dame, Kiana James, and Felon and Kalani were really nothing. They were probably the, the least thing to talk about on the show. But next week, everyone, we're about to wrap up the show. Next week, we are going to be getting Ridge Holland versus Joaquin Wild. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get that match. I think it'll be, I don't even know what I think it'll be. I'm going to reserve my judgment until we see it. We're going to see Noam Dar versus Dijak. I will also reserve my judgment until we see it. And then So Ruka versus Lola Vice. Excited as all hell to see that match. Dude, dude, are you kidding me? So Ruka versus Lola Vice. This is like a match made specifically for me. This is how I feel. I feel like they if they were like, let's book a match for Denise, this is the match that it is. That's how excited I am about So Ruka and Lola Vice because Lola Vice is fiery as all hell. And So Ruka is so lovable, in my opinion. She's just so, I just really like So Ruka a whole lot. So for that reason, I'm very excited for that match. We got YT here who says, so Andre Chase screwed over his own bet. Yeah. 
Looks like it. It looks like it. I don't know. I feel like a little bit. I'm so over the Andre Chase, Chase U University stuff, guys. Just end it. I'm sorry. Just end it. I'm ready to move on. William Buner says that should tell you that you don't need Botox, Denise. Oh, I know. Give me like four years, four years, and I might do the Botox. But also, they say that you should get the Botox in order to preserve your face before you start like wrinkling up. So I don't know. I need to talk to a Botox specialist. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thank you so much, William Buner. So before I go, everybody, um, there's a lot of WrestleMania content up here on the channel. I'm most primarily going to push the interviews that I did. If you can, check those ones out. They're very short. They're like two minutes long uh, each. And check those out because that's the way that I make my money back by going to these shows. And uh, I do get a little stressed out when I don't get that much content. So <laughs> check out those interviews and, um, you know, we'll make do with the best that make best of what. How's that saying go? Make do with the best you have. I don't know. The point is, check out those freaking interviews because that's that's the way that I make my money back. So check those ones out. And then, of course, the WrestleMania Night 1 and Night 2 reviews are also up. Those were not live, live streams. Those were videos. Um, check those one out as well. Those were just more like instant reactions as well as, as well as the live experience of it all. And I have a lot of stuff that I'm also still working on, a lot of cool ideas and things that are coming up here on the channel. And so make sure you guys do check those out. And then last but not least, tomorrow is going to be a very fun day because tomorrow is AEW Dynamite. And they are promoting that the Young Bucks are going to be airing a backstage video from All In. And from the looks of it, it's the assumption is that we're going to be seeing backstage footage between the fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry. Now, that is going to be hella exciting. Who the hell knows what we're going to see, what is going to happen. Um, but we will be here to talk about it myself and Righteous Reg. And then this Friday on SmackDown, I will be introducing a brand new uh, SmackDown co-host moving forward. Uh, I might as well announce it now. For those of you guys that listen to Busted Open, you guys will know exactly who this is. But my new co-host on Friday's uh, SmackDown here for Speak Now Pro Wrestling is going to be Robin Lundberg. Uh, Robin Lundberg, I've done so many shows with him now I think like three or four and I really really like Robin so Robin's gonna be joining me moving forward each and every single Friday night to talk about Smackdown so he'll be making his debut here on the channel this Friday so it'll be a really really good time and I cannot wait so last thing what we got is here is a super chat from Chloe Adams who says feel bad for Asuka still winless at Wrestlemania yeah, poor Asuka, man. But she's freaking killing it, though. Like, winless, is, it sucks, right? But look at Bailey. Like, she got this really great moment. It'll happen eventually. Just stick with it. She's such a great wrestler. Uh, eventually, we'll see her get this, like, really great WrestleMania moment. So, fingers crossed that it happens for Asuka. Maybe next year. We'll see. Uh, Chloe Adams, thank you so much for the super chat. All right. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much as always. And I will catch you guys here for the upcoming shows. See you guys later. Bye, everyone.